Is there any simple way to create, delete, and manage VLANs over the big network that have hundreds of switches in large number of VLANs? In this network, it's easy to manage multiple VLANs because we have smaller number of devices or switches. But what happened to manage the VLANs over this big network? By the end of this video, you will understand how VLAN trunking protocol or VTP simplifies VLAN management and how to configure this VTP step by step. In a traditional VLAN configuration, while we are creating, modifying, and deleting VLANs inside one switch, we must do the same configuration in all connected switches to effect complete VLAN configuration. For example, in the following network infrastructure, we have three switches that are connected with each other via trunking. And also we have three VLANs with VLAN number 10, 20, and 30. That VLAN 10 belongs to HR, VLAN 20 belongs to finance, and VLAN 30 belongs to IT servers. PC1 and PC6 are connected in VLAN 10. PC2 and PC4 are connected in VLAN 20 and PC3 and servers are in VLAN 30. Now the scenario is while we would like to add one another VLAN or VLAN 40 inside switch 1, then we should bring the same configuration and changes in all connected switches for effective VLAN implementation. I mean add the same VLAN 40 inside switch 2 and 3. This method is easy for small to medium sized network that have less than 5 switches in 5 to 6 VLANs, but it would be much more difficult to implement in the big size network that has over 10 switches in 10 to 30 VLANs. By the way, this was a traditional VLAN configuration, and now let's see advanced VLAN configuration that is used for simple, centralized, and easy VLAN management that is called VLAN Trunking Protocol or VTP. Now the question is, what is VLAN Trunking Protocol? VLAN Trunking Protocol or VTP is Cisco proprietary and used for managing and propagating VLAN configuration across the switches inside the network. As it is a Cisco proprietary protocol, it will not include a network plus 00920. So don't worry, this is a bonus video. In the following network infrastructure, we would like to configure the VLAN trunking protocol in creating VLAN 10, 20, 30, and 40. VLAN 10 belongs to HR, 20 belongs to finance, VLAN 30 to IT servers, and VLAN 40 belongs to security system. In this diagram, we assigning one switch or switch one to act as a server, while the other operate as a client. The term server indicate its role in providing services to all connected clients. I mean all VLANs can be created on the server switch, which then distributes them to all client switch within the domain. Now I'm sure you understand what is VLAN trunking protocol and why do we need it for our network. So let's see what other features do VTP have. We will have top three features while using VTP in our networking systems. The first is centralized VLAN management. I means it allows network administrators to create, modify, and delete VLANs centrally on one switch and these changes are propagated automatically to other switches in the same VTP domain. The second feature is consistency. It means to ensure that all switches in the domain have consistent VLAN configuration. It's reducing error and mass configuration. The third and best feature is it reduced administrative overhead. 
It simplifies network management, particularly in large networks with multiple switches and VLANs. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell button for stay connected for the most up-to-date Network Plus 009 training with me, Nasir Ahmad Mahbub, and Wadantek YouTube channel. Now let's jump to the VTP modes. VTP or VLAN trunking protocol has three modes. The first mode is a server mode. That is default mode and responsible for creating, modifying, and deleting VLANs as well as distributing that VLAN configuration to all clients. The second mode is climate. Of course, we know the client is on receiving configuration and it does not able to change any configuration on any VLANs that is receiving from the server. The third mode is transparent mode. Transparent mode is only a switch responsible for transferring a server configuration to other clients. In this switch or the switch that is in transparent mode, it will not be included in any VTP configuration. It's just acting like a bridge and only transferring server configuration to other connected switches. Now let's jump what is VTP pruning. VTP pruning optimizes bandwidth by reducing unnecessary VLAN traffic on trunk links. It ensures VLAN traffic is only sent to switches that have poured in that VLANs. For example, in the following network infrastructure, we have four VLANs, 10, 20, 30, and 40. As you can see that we have two computers in VLAN 40. One is connected in switch one, and another is connected in switch two. But we don't have any connected device in switch three in VLAN 40. So VTP pruning is not sending data of VLAN 40 to switch 3 because it doesn't have any connected port for the VLAN 40 on switch 3. Now it's time to talk about VTP version. We have three versions in VTP or VLAN trunking protocol. The first version is only supporting standard range of VLAN. The second version is supporting token ring VLANs and the third version is supporting extended VLAN range. Also, it enhances security with password authentication. Now it's time to jump to the practical section and configure the VTP in the following network diagram. In the following network diagram, we have already configured the trunk link between these switches. I have designed the same network infrastructure in Cisco Packet Reset. In the first phase, let's configure the VDP. First, click on Server Switch, click on CLI, enter into Configuration Mode, define VTP domain by the name of Wadantec. Let's define VTP mode as a server and then assign password for lets the client switches to connect for receiving configuration. In the second phase, let's create all four VLANs, VLAN 10 as a HR, VLAN 20 as a finance, VLAN 30 as a IT servers, and VLAN 40 as a security system. And if you would like to learn more about VLAN, please watch this video that I have created previously. Now just enter the show VLAN brief. Boom, you can see that we have created four VLANs with its related names. In the first stage, we have configured the VTP. In the second stage, we have created all the related VLANs. In the third stage, let's check VTP status by entering show VTP status. As you can see, the VTP version, also configuration revision number, maximum VLAN supported, number of existing VLAN inside this server, or VTP operation mode, VTP domain, and all its detail are right here. As you can see here, the configuration revision number, what is configuration revision number? Each time a VLAN configuration is changed on VTP server, 
the revision number increased by one. For example, the current revision number in server is 10, but when we bring changes, this number will increase. In other switches are comparing this revision number of incoming VTP update and apply the configuration with the highest revision number. We have been done with the server switch. Now let's configure the client switch to receive the configuration or VLAN update from the server switch. Open switch 2, go to the configuration mode and just type VTP demand. It was, I think, Wadantic. And just VTP mode client and enter the password. Also, the client configuration have been done successfully. Now let's check the VTP status for this switch as well. Now you can see the VTP status, VTP update, VTP mode is client, and VTP configuration revision number. Let's check the VLANs. Does it receive VLANs from the server or not? In the configuration mode, enter show VLAN brief. Boom! You can see that we have received all the VLANs from the server and we can practice the same configuration in switch 3. Of course, we have received the same configuration on switch 3. We have successfully configured the VLAN trunking protocol for this network infrastructure. Thank you so much and Allah Hafiz.